next up is Sparkman. One enemy you'll encounter quite a bit in this stage are these shifting electrical currents. They'll flash just before they release their current, so keep your eye on that before jumping, especially on these shorter platforms by the pits. These red blocks will shoot up as soon as you land on them, and the ceiling is encased with spikes, so make your jumps quick, and if the next block is low, just simply walk off. These trash compactors will spew out large piles of blocked up shit. Don't bother shooting them, because you'll have to take damage to get out. Just simply walk right over them. You'll find another series of these red boost blocks at the home stretch. These screws will attach and slowly drift down from above, so you don't want to hit them while on the blocks or you're fucked. So grab the magnet missile and fire from the platforms before hopping onto the blocks. If you're stuck underneath them, use the shadow blade to fire above you and then soon you'll hit Sparkman's lair. He'll alternate between firing off a series of small spark shots in all directions and one large charge of spark. Keep your distance, but stay close enough to hit him with your shadow blades. The obscure floor design can help you if you lean against this wall and fire your shadow blades rapidly when he's up top. It's just easy to control your shots this way. After prevailing, you'll get the Spark Shock weapon. It's a pretty straightforward charge of electricity that will short circuit and freeze the certain robot masters that it's effective against. Next up, Snake Man's level, which is definitely one of the coolest looking levels in all of the Mega Man games. You run into a series of these snake heads that spit plasma balls at you. The Magnum Missile fries these fucks down quick. The larger snakes fire three projectiles at you and have a shaky, slithering platform by their body. Stay back and away from the slithering and fire two hard knuckles into it. Later on you'll end up on these floating platforms that pop out of the ground and weave back and forth. While in this area these clouds will come passing by and... Holy shit, it's Bill Bill's brothers. If you shoot the clouds, they'll fire off quickly in a straight line. Sometimes it helps to get them off the screen, but don't fire when they're right in front of you or you'll get smashed in the face. Especially on this part right before Snake Man's lair. Shoot them when they're up high so they can pass right above you. Now onto Snake Man. Now his weakness is the needle cannon, but we don't have that yet, so we're just gonna stick with the normal arm cannon. Yeah, you can do this stage right away if you want, but I like to have some of the other weapons when going through the level. He runs around quite a bit, but doesn't do much besides stop and fire off his search snake, which is a ground weapon, so you don't have to be looking in all directions for his attacks. Fire as rapidly as you can, it won't drain much of his health, but you'll get plenty of shots in. His room has a unique floor design, much like Sparkman. Use it to your advantage by hiding in this little duck because he'll jump right over it. But get the hell out of there quick or he'll run right over you when he comes back. After taking him out, you'll get the search snake weapon, which like I said, is a ground weapon. It has its uses, but not too many of them. Next is Gemini Man. His level is pretty interesting in that the first small portion takes place above ground and has this crystal-like floor structure, and then the rest of it takes place underground and has these flashy blocks for the floor. Pretty big departure. After blasting your way through the small, simple enemies at the beginning, you'll reach this area where Breakman shows up, and instead of fighting him, he blows up this thing blocking your way. You gotta wonder about this guy. Now when you slip down, hug the wall but not directly to grab this extra life. It's pretty hard, but it can be done. The rush coil won't reach it, and you don't have the jet yet, so this is the only way here. Here you blast your way through these inanimate fertilized eggs and blue sperm that swim out of it. Since you're taking out so many enemies, you'll usually get a few pretty good power-ups. I usually ignore the question mark block up there. You can get it, but more often than not, it's something you don't even need. Later on, you'll hit the water, and here's where the Rush Marine really comes in handy. Hop in, drive straight, and continuously fire. You run out of Marine Juice as long as you're in it, so don't stop for any reason other than grabbing the power-ups to recharge the Marine. When you see the ladder up above, hop on the blocks and go back to normal form and climb it. If you die, or run out of marine along the way, you'll have to jump from block to block while avoiding the bombs fired from the fish below and the dragonflies that charge from the left. It's a bit tricky, especially since one hit can send you off the block since it's so small. So using the marine here is very much recommended. You'll soon reach Gemini Man, who has a bit of a split personality, or rather a doppelganger. It may start a pattern of jumping over you while running back towards you in a cycle. Neither of the Gemini Man fire until you fire first, but you can get hit by them if they run into you. So jump constantly and fire the search snake, it won't take long till he's disposed of. The weapon you get is the Gemini Laser, which Gemini Man hardly even really used. It ricochets off walls, but the problem is you can only fire one at a time, and it takes a while to disappear, so if you miss, you could find yourself standing around waiting for it to hit something so you can fire off your next shot. Needleman is the last to go on our hit list, and you'd think there'd be a ton of spots with death trap needle shaped spikes, but there aren't any. 
You do get these porcupine fucks that fire in all directions and then roll at you. Keep a rapid rate of fire at them, and if it doesn't kill them, just jump over them when they roll towards you and keep running. Then there are these long ass needles that expand and retract from the ceilings. Move in right as they're on their way back up, they won't be gone for too long at all. Other than those two hazards, there's nothing else in the stage resembling needles. The stage is pretty easy with the basic hard hats, dragonflies, sniper joes, etc. And the level generally feels shorter than it actually is. Needleman has two forms of attack. The needle cannon, which you'll fire while jumping straight up into the air, getting quite a bit of height for the pudgy schmuck that he is. And he'll use the plate of needles on his head for short range attacks. But you should stand pretty far away from him anyway, so don't have to worry about that too much. Dodge the needle cannon and fire off your Gemini laser while he's in the air. He'll always get in the way of it when he comes back down. If you fire too soon and he jumps over it, it'll continuously bounce around and you'll take some punishment. After only a few shots with the laser, Needle Man is done for and you'll claim the needle cannon from him. It's a pretty solid weapon and doesn't drain too much weapon energy. So after defeating all 8 Robot Masters, you'll have to visit 4 of the stages again, or remix versions of them, with an unknown boss of each. The 4 remix levels are of Spark Man, Needle Man, Shadow Man, and Gemini Man. It makes no difference which order you choose, so I'm just gonna go through them in the order from the least recent that we've been to. So I'll go to Shadow Man's first. First thing you may notice that's different about this level from the original Shadow Man level is the addition of Spikes. You have to watch when falling down areas that transition screens, they've got these spikes installed all over. These red platforms will temporarily let go as soon as you land on them, so you'll have to jump as soon as you land or you'll fall to your death. It can be tricky getting across these things in the dark, but on the second set, which is above the pit, just use the rush jet and you can just sail right over it. So you'll enter the gateway to the boss and... Holy shit, it's fucking Woodman! But what the hell is this? He's putting on this suit? Aw, oh, how lame is this? Well, it's the same Woodman battle from Mega Man 2, but you've got all different weapons now. The weapon of choice here is the Needle Cannon. Jump over his leaf shield and plug his ass full of needles. After beating him, you'll realize this isn't the main boss, you've only completed half the level. Which makes sense, I mean, that was really short. Most of the second portion is made up of these same parachuting heads that took up the long stretch in Shadow Man's level. Repeat the same strategy as earlier. Soon you'll reach the gate and... Oh my god, Heat Man! And shit, he's heading into the same suit Woodman did. What a cheap ass maneuver to save space. Heatman will once again fire off streams of atomic fire and then torpedo himself across the room after you hit him. Two weapons are useful against him, the top spin and the shadow blade. Since the top spin is fucking retarded, I recommend the latter. It's easier to jump over him from a distance anyway. So next is the alternate Sparkman level. Again, you can go through these in any order, it doesn't matter. Use the Shadow Blade to take out this douchebag blocking your way. Something new to the Sparkman stage are these rotating wheels that'll shift you over while standing on them. They don't really move you very fast though, so don't panic when jumping across these spikes. You'll reach the gate to find Metal Man. So if you haven't caught on by now, each of these four stages have two Robot Masters from Mega Man 2. Only they're dressed like complete buffoons, it sucks a lot of life out of the idea. But it's still cool to fight these guys again. Metal Man's weakness is the Magnet Missile. And no, you don't get any of their weapons on top of the ones you already have, so acquiring the Metal Blades again is out, unfortunately. Simply jump over the blades and pump them full of magnets. After you get out, be careful of all these spike-infested walls. You'll slip down a few screens, so keep your eye on what's ahead. You'll find more of these shifting electrical charge things, but a little shortcut here is to stand back and let them take themselves off screen and they'll just disappear. The stage is otherwise a piece of cake. Quick Man is the second Robot Master here. You'd think he wouldn't be very quick with that huge ass suit dragging him down, but he can still move. His weakness is the Search Snake, which is kinda shitty cause the snakes will only travel on the floor and he's always jumping around, so either time the shots to connect where he's going to land, or just fire at close range when he's jumping back and forth. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.